there is going to be an overflow. I want those words to sink in. There is going to be an overflow. Even though there have been a drought all along, even though there have been a shortage all along, even though there have been a scarcity all along, there is going to be an overflow. So that's why you need to be prepared. That's why you need to be prepared for it. When we say prepare, what do we mean? Make something ready, right? Make something ready for use. Make something ready for a consideration. When we say an overflow, what do we mean? Something is going to flow over. It's going to be more than enough. If I have a cup in here and I pour in water and I keep pouring in the water and I keep pouring it to the top, at a certain time, the water will spill over. So there's an overflow because it will gush over the edges. It will gush over the container. That is what an overflow means. So what does it simply mean? Get ready. Get ready for a runover. Get ready for more than what you bargained for. That is it. You've been asking God for something. Okay? Perhaps you've been asking God for two things. God, can you just give me two of these things? God is now saying, get ready for more than what you bargained for. That is what he's saying. He said, get ready for more than what you are expecting. That is what he's saying. Ephesians 3, 20, he says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. So what he's saying is that he's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, that we can ask or think or imagine. Now, I have two questions here that I want to ask. Now, the first question is, are you actually prepared for what you are asking or praying for? Now, they are going to come in two levels. Watch this. The first level is, you've been asking for something. You've been praying for something. Even that which you are asking for and praying for, are you actually prepared for it? What you are asking God for, are you prepared for it? That's the first question. I have a story yet that relates to that. If you open your Bible to Acts chapter 12, Acts 12, I'll read verse 5. Acts 12, 5. Acts 12, 5. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he fell, he was asleep, fasting with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrist. Then the angel told him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. And he said, Now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard post and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door in the gate, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone Peter is standing at the door. You are out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Now, remember the first question I said. I, I said, are you what truly prepared for what you are asking for? 
That's the first level of question I want to ask. Now, these were Christians, believers like you and I, praying for something. They were praying for the release of Peter, right? And truly, God answered that prayer. Because of their prayers, the Lord went to what? To, he sent an angel to free Peter from the prison. Now, they were praying for it. Now, the answer to their prayer was at the door knocking. And they didn't believe that was the answer. Brother came and said, hey, Peter is at the door. What we've been praying for, they said, no. What did they say? What was their exact words? Let's look at what they said. They said, um, let me look for it again. Um, when it came to him, I think that should be in verse. Um, Peter is standing at the door. What did they say to him? You are out of your mind. <laughs> and that was what they were praying for. So my first question is, are you truly prepared for what you are praying for? When that thing comes and is knocking at your door, will you open the door or will you still be saying, no, it can't be? So I want you to prepare your mind. The first preparation of mind is prepare it for what you are praying for. Okay, that's number one. Now the second question is, are you prepared for more than what you are asking for? That's another level. They were praying for Peter. They got it. They didn't even believe it was Peter that was at the door. That was what they are praying for. In all of us, while we are praying, let's be sure that we really want what we are praying for. So that when that thing shows faces and say, I'm the one you are praying for, you'll be able to recognize it. Not that at that time, you'll not go back on your knee and be praying. Imagine Rhoda said, Peter is at the door. They said, you're out of your mind. Probably one of them at that time was still saying, rabba, 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 rabba. you're out of my mind. Go out of this place. It's going to be rabba, rabba. No, they, no, they were praying for the hand was there they did not open the door for the answer will you open the door for your answer when it comes my sister or you are just praying the answer was knocking they were still saying rabba, 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 and the answer was knocking and that's how a lot of us are doing believers we are just praying we are just praying we are just praying. What we are actually praying for is at the door knocking. It's right beside you. It's right in front of you. But you are just praying. You have closed your eyes. And all you are doing, you are praying. So all you are saying, that means all that is coming out from your mouth, you don't truly really believe it from your heart. Because if you truly really believe from your heart, you will know that your answer is already knocking at the door. All you need to do at that time is go and open it and say, thank you, Jesus, my answer is here and begin to praise him. So the first question is, are you really prepared for what you are what asking for? The second one is, now if God goes another level, are you not prepared for what, for what if he gives you more than what you are even asking for? Are you prepared for that? Let's look at another story of another person. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Kings. Chapter 4, I'll be reading verses 1 to 7. Second Kings, yes, Second Kings, chapter 4, I'll be reading verses 1 to 7. One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead. You know how we fear the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, the woman said, except a flask of olive oil. She replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flax into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Then, bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. Then the holy oil stopped flowing. Then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the holy boy and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. And you and your son can live on what is left over. Now this is a woman that was in debt, and she went to the prophet. And the prophet said, What do you have in the house? She said, All, all, all I have in the house is just a hoy. She said, No, fine, no problem. I want you to go ahead and get, go to your neighbors and gather empty jars, okay? 
In NIV translation, that verse 3 says, Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Don't ask for just a few. That was the instruction that the prophet gave to her. Now, this woman at this time, her only concern was, let me just have money to settle my debts. Remember the second question we are saying, are you prepared for more than what you are asking for? Okay? Our own words, let me just have money to settle my debt. Prophet, please help me. I am in debt. I just, and the man said, okay, go around. Ask for empty jars. But, do, but, but remember this. Give her an instruction, a specific instruction. Don't just ask for what? A few. But the woman went there and just took as many as she could do. She didn't really take cognizance of that instruction. That asked for many, 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 many. She didn't take. Her home is just, let me just have enough to settle this debt. All this, all this one that this prophet is saying, that one's an extension. Let me just have enough, enough to settle this debt. Our own instruction today is prepare for an overflow. Our own instruction today is what? Prepare for more than what you are bargaining for. Our own is, uh, um, instruction today is Prepare for what? The greater thing, the overflow. So this woman, her whole expectation was just, God, I just want to pay my debt, so that's all I want. This just that I've taken is enough. Let me just go home and start doing what the prophet has told me to do. Close the door. Oh, yeah, son, let's close the door. Let's start pouring. Let's start pouring. And then they poured. It kept increasing. Eh? Maybe at that time, she now started getting excited. Hey, hey. Okay, bring more. Ah, mom, yo, the vessel is finished, though. Hey. So immediately, the hall just stopped. Immediately, what happened? The hall just stopped. But thank God for his mercies. At least when she went to meet the prophet, the prophet said, no problem. Go and sell the one you have gathered. Pay off your debts. And the little extra, you can use it to take care of your, your children. You see from here that the woman's expectation was just to be able to pay her debts. That's what I, was her expectation. But she didn't know that God had more in stock. God had plans to not only make it possible for her to pay her debts, but also to make her financially free and flourishing. But that was dependent on her readiness and her willingness to make provision for the overflow. I repeat it. That was dependent on her readiness and her willingness to make provision for the overflow. She got a prophetic instruction, just as you and I are getting it today, that we should prepare for the overflow. Our whole prophetic instruction was what? Don't borrow just a few, gather as many as possible. But who was, let me just pay my debts. Mm. And that's how many of us say, please don't, don't give me too much of this thing. I says, let me just settle this one. Yeah, the one you are telling me is, is, is over. Ah, it's too big for my mind to comprehend. Ah, let's just... Let's not solve this matter. Let's not solve this immediate one. That's what uh, uh, you're exaggerating. Let's just take this one off the box. And that's how a lot of us think. But we don't know that the overflow is dependent on our readiness and our willingness to make provision for the overflow. We need to make provision for it. If we truly want it, we must make provision for it. But thank God for his mercies. At least at the end of the day, she was able to pay her debts. And the Bible said she had extra for her and her sons to live. But that was not what God intended. God wanted to give her more. But it was dependent on her readiness. God wants to give you an eye more. But it's dependent on her what? Our readiness. She was not truly ready for the overflow. Like I wrote it here. That God intended. What she just wanted was a solution to our immediate problem. And that's how most of us are when we come. And God is, wants to do more. That's why he said in Ephesians 3.20. But that overflow is dependent, worse than dependent on our complete obedience to the instruction. It was dependent on our mindset to believe. And it was also dependent on our preparation for it. She was not actually prepared for it. Can't you see? When the oil was flowing and flowing, what happened? At a certain time, she got excited, I guess. And she said to her son, please, bring more jars. And the son said what? Mommy, it's finished. So you see, she wasn't actually prepared for the overflow. Are we prepared for the overflow? Are we? I remember something that happened to me recently. I was working on something. And I was praying for that thing, okay? 
And all of a sudden, someone just messaged me and said, ah, somebody need your service on that thing you've been working for. I said, eh? And the truth of the matter is, I've not put structures in place at all. So I said, eh? And that person said to me, so, when you said you were ready for that thing, you don't even have anything in place. I said, Jesus is Lord. And this was just recently. And the Lord just said, remember that message I told you, prepare for it. You can see yourself, you are not prepared. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. Whatever you are asking God for, let God see that you are prepared for it. You are asking for a promotion, but you are not preparing yourself to the level of that new manager. Have you started bracing yourself up as a manager? Are you working like that, talking like that? Have you brushed up your skills? You are asking God, a church, for instance, is asking God for more members. Still, they are not buying more chairs. So, are you proving to God that you are prepared for the overflow? You are asking God for more customers, more clients, but you have not put your business in a structure to adjust to more clients. When they now come, what will not happen? We now start running elter skelter. That's not what God expects from us. When we say we want the overflow, He wants to see that we actually mean that we want to, the overflow. He wants to see us do something that we truly want the overflow. Isaiah 54, verse 2, NIV translation says, Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. You know when you see a tent, cords, lengthen it, make it longer. Strengthen your stakes. A lot of us are still holding back and we say we want overflow. Many people will say, God, use me. You can use anything, use me. But we are still holding back. At the time that he is using you and he's dropping things into your mind and he's saying, do it in this dimension and you are restraining yourself, but you want an overflow now and I'm about, I'm about to move through you. You are holding me back. You're ministering to people and the Spirit of God comes upon you so suddenly and he wants to through you do something, but you are holding back. So how do you want the overflow to flow? He said, enlarge the place of your tent, strength. Your tent curtains wide. Make it wide for the overflow you're asking for. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. So the instruction for you and I today is make room for more than what you have been asking God for. Remember the first question is, are you prepared for what you are even asking for? That one we even show that a lot of us are not even prepared. We are just mumbling the words. But when the answer is at the door, you are you can't hope that's even what you're asking God for now. It's not saying prepare for what what for more than what you are even asking me for. Say don't hold back, strengthen yourself to undo more than you are asking for. Brace yourself up, brace up yourself physically, mentally, spiritually. Whatever you need to do, start preparing for more things that are coming your way. If you need to improve on your time management skills, start doing it so that you can accommodate more. If you need to be more organized, start doing it so that you can accommodate more. If you need to put structures into your business to accommodate more clients, start doing it. Let God see that you are ready for more clients. If you need to start upgrading your skills, start doing it so that let God know. If you are tr trusting God for a leadership position, let God see that you have upgraded yourself for that leadership role. Whatever you need to put in place, put in place. If you need to start discarding some things that you don't need on your table again, discard them. Let him know that you are preparing for more. You are trusting God for more and you need a space. If you need to discard some rubbish in your home because you want the, the space to occupy more things that you are trusting him for, let him see that you are ready for it. If you need to ask for more grace, ask for more strength, do it. Just show God that you are getting ready. If you need to start making important adjustments, do so. If you need to start delegating some tasks, do so. If you need to start training others to take some job off your, off your hands, do so. Whatever you need to do, just let God know that you are getting ready. Now, lastly, as we are rounding up, not rounding up per se, but we are going to the last segment. I want us to open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 10. Proverbs 3, 5 to 10. Passion translation, and I read. It said, trust in the Lord completely. And do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do. And he will lead you wherever you go. Don't think for a moment 
that you know it all. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. Then you will find the healing refreshment your body and spirit long for. Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your first fruits, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of your life we overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. The last segment of my message today is I want to pick to us five key things for us to do so that this overflow will truly manifest. Now I've mentioned some things we need to put to start doing to show God that we are ready for the overflow. I asked you a question. I said, are you ready for what you have asked God for? I gave you an illustration of Peter. Don't be like the disciples that were praying and your answer is at the door knocking. I asked another question. Are you ready for more than what you are expecting, more than what you are bargained for? If God, like God now is giving us a blank check, like that woman, she had a blank check and it was dependent on how many empty vessels she would get. She wasn't bargaining for more than that. She just wanted to solve her immediate problem. But God intended to give her more. Now we want to look at some five key things that are important for us to know. For our overflow to manifest. Number one is our complete trust in God. is very crucial. Our complete trust. Not just trust, complete when we say trust, we say a firm belief. A firm belief in the reliability of God. Your belief in him that he can do what he said he will do. Your belief in him that this overflow that is asking you and I to prepare for, he can do it. So we need to completely trust in him. A complete trust in God. That's the number one thing, not partial trust. So whatever you need to do as a person to adjust that, begin to do. If you need to read more of the word of God, to, to build up your faith level, please do. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you need to read more books, if you need to listen to more sermon, to build up your faith level, please do. Please do. Whatever you need to do, because it's only with such strong faith can you take this overflow that is coming? So whatever you need to do as an individual, build up your faith level. So complete trust in God. That's number one. Number two, complete obedience to his instruction and leading. Complete obedience. For this overflow, God will be prompting you. The spirit of God will be prompting you on what to do for this overflow to manifest. He says complete obedience to his instruction and leading, not relying on your own opinion and wisdom. For this overflow, your wisdom is not paramount. For this overflow, your opinion is not paramount. Please take note of that. For this overflow, your wisdom is not paramount. Your opinion on the matter is not paramount. It's what he has said that is paramount. It's wisdom. Like in John chapter 21, verse 4 to 6. John 21. Something happened in John chapter 21. I'll just read 5, 4, 4 to 6. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. They called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? Sorry, he called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your nets on the right hand side of the boat and you will get some. So they did. And they couldn't all in the nets because there were so many fish in it. Can you see? He gave them specific direction. 
He said, to the right, to the right, to the right. At that time, their opinion was not paramount. Their wisdom as fishermen was not paramount. It was the divine direction he gave to them that was paramount. And the Bible said that what they caught was so large a number of fish. For this overflow, it is complete obedience to his instruction and leading, not relying on your own opinion and wisdom concerning the matter. That's number two. Do as he instructs for the overflow to happen. Number three, you need to be intimate with him for this overflow. When we say intimate, we mean closely acquainted, familiar, familiar. Why should you be familiar with him, you say? So that you know when he's talking. So that you know when he's instructing. So it's not a case of you trying to still imagine, is it God speaking or someone else? That's why you need to be acquainted with him. Someone you are acquainted with, you can easily recognize their voice. As we are all seated, if our spouse is talking somewhere, you will know he's the one talking because you are acquainted with him. So that's how God wants you and I to be acquainted with him. So that when he's instructing, as regards the overflow, you will know he's the one speaking. Like these people here, he said to them, put it to the right. They knew he was the one speaking. So concerning your business, when he gives that knowledge, take it this way. You will know that he's the one speaking. So for the overflow to, to manifest, you need to be intimate with him. You need to be familiar with his voice, familiar with his ways, familiar with the way he does things. It is very important. Because why? He will be instructing us. Because why? He will be talking. Because why? He will be guiding us to our overflow. You need to be intimate to the point that you ask him questions. It's someone that you are intimate with that you ask questions, right? So you need to be intimate to the point that you do what? You ask him questions. You get him involved in all that you do. That's the essence of intimacy. I'm very sure you get your husband involved in things, right? So God is expecting that from us as well. Get me involved in all that you're doing. We need to be intimate so that we can be close to him. We need to be intimate and give him undivided attention. That is very crucial. So that's number three. Number four, for this overflow to manifest, avoid everything that is wrong. All these things I got in the Proverbs chapter three that I read out earlier. Number four was what? Avoid everything that is wrong. It's all in that Proverbs chapter three. If you notice at the end, the last verse that I read says for you to have an overflow. So all those conditions were embedded in that Proverbs chapter 3. So number 4 was avoid everything that is wrong. The Bible says sin is an abomination to God. In Isaiah 59, 1, what did the Bible say? It says, surely the hand of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is yet too dull to hear. But the iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have eaten his face from you so that he will not hear so that he will not hear so we need to do what to run from anything that is sinful avoid it avoid it as much as possible avoid it because the bible makes us know that it is iniquities that separate us from god it's not because his arm is too short to help us so for this overflow sin is a no-go area and the last one is still in that proverbs 3 glorify god with all your wealth for the overflow glorify god with all your wealth honor god with the wealth he has given to you your offering, your tithe, your sacrificial offering, your compassionate help. Glorify God with your wealth. The wealth he has committed into your hands right now. Have you been glorifying him with it? Have you been honoring God with it? 
before you can add more, before you can give you the overflow, what have you done with the wealth? Can you see you as a kingdom financier? Have you been financing kingdom work? Have you? Before you commit the overflow into your hands. These are things that we need to know. So I'm here to speak again and say, prepare for the overflow. Prepare for the overflow. Get ready for more than what you have been bargaining for. Because more than what you have been bargaining for is coming your way in the name of Jesus. More than what you are bargaining for is coming to your home in the name of Jesus. But you need to prepare for it. You need to prepare for it. Don't be like that woman with the oil. There was a prophetic instruction. Don't take few. Take as many, many, many. The prophetic instruction here is adjust things and prepare for this overflow. You know what you are trusting God for. God is now saying, get up and start putting things in place to receive it. Is it a child? Get up. Start putting in things in place to receive it. Is it business expansion? Get up. Start putting things in place to receive it. Is it career investment? Get up. Start putting things in place to receive it. Don't wait till he's knocking at your door. And then you now start running out of scatter. Prepare for it. It's my business. Adjust things. It's my ministry. I want an overflow. Adjust things. That is what God is saying to you and I today. And for the overflow to manifest, complete trust in God is required. Complete obedience in God is required. Being intimate with him to know when he's speaking is required. Avoiding everything that is sinful is required. And glorifying God with our wealth is required. Prepare for the overflow because it is here already. Prepare for the overflow. Get things in place. Arrange yourself for it. Improve on your time management skills. Improve on things that you are doing wrong to accommodate the overflow. Improve on your personality for the overflow. Get ready for the new level. The new level you are trusting in God for. Get ready for it. Put yourself in place for it. Is it a new role leadership wise? Get ready for it. Put yourself in place for it. Whatever it is you are trusting in God for, get ready for it. I just